Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl. It's a game with very little hand-holding. This trait is reflected in the weapons. So statistics exist, but there are many other factors which simple numbers can't convey. What makes a gun good, if it's rare, what ammo it uses, and how rare the ammo is. How's a new player going to figure out what gun to take and what won't come back to bite them later by frequently jamming due to not being reliable or the ammo being too expensive? Well, I'm going to fix that more than 10 years after the game's release. Hey, if no one's done it before, there's no better time than now. Okay, before I start, quick note. Pistols are effective at around 50 meters. Shotguns at buckshot with around 20. Slugs at 100. Rifles are effective around 300. And low crouching with shift and control, or you can rewind that on the keyboard. It gives almost the same accuracy as aiming down with iron sights and it's vital early game. If you don't, you won't hit your target with that dinky little pistol you get. I'll get into that in a second. I'm also not going to cover weapons the player won't find without looking at a guide such as the deagle, i.e. the black kite and variants of guns which are not found easily because this is meant to be a star guide. Okay, I'm going to start with the most basic weapon. It needs no ammo and every stalker starts with it. It's the knife. It does its job pretty well. You can sneak up on enemies and backstabbing the enemy usually kills them in one head, but it might be a bit off. However, where it excels is breaking destructible objects like boxes, especially at the beginning of the game when you're low on ammo. Instead of wasting your vital ammunition breaking boxes, the knife's right-click stab destroys all of them in one hit. Just don't fight an enemy head-on with this. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next pistol. The dinky little pistol I was talking about, the PMM. It's based off of the Russian Makarov, many of you might know that. This is the weapon you get given by a character named Wolf at the start of the game, along with the knife. This gun is the definition of average. It's only effective at a short range along with having low damage, accuracy, weight, and magazine size of only 8 rounds. This is countered by the fact that it uses 9x18mm ammunition. Most stalkers have a gun which uses this ammo, it's cheap to buy, and is very reliable. So it's not the worst choice for beginners, but there are superior alternatives. There's also a variant called the PPE-1S the player can find. It's a silenced version with better accuracy, and it's dropped by some people. Onwards is the sawed-off shotgun. Sorry, the picture is a bit small, but here you go. It's called the sawn-off double barrel in the game. It's based off a sawn-off variant of the TOS-66, which is a civilian shotgun used for hunting, usually in Russia. Its properties do carry over into the game having only two rounds and a low damage against humans. It is effective, however, against mutants. Very effective, especially compared to your dicky little pistol. The only way to kill most enemy stalkers with this, though, is to aim for the head, even in close range. The shots do have a high chance to stagger the enemy, but it's not the best idea to reload the gun in front of the enemy. It's imperative to make use of the two shots given and fall back into cover. Also, a downside of this gun is, while the distance between the player and the enemy increases, the damage falls off a cliff. It really is advisable to take cover and try to get cl closer to make use of this gun. The advantage of it, advantages of it anyways. <laughs> there are three types of ammo for this gun. 12 gauge buckshot, slug and dart rounds. Let me just get into that real quick. The dart rounds are extremely rare and by the time you get enough of them to use, there will be much better rifles suited for killing humans. Don't use this. Buckshot is the bread and butter shotgun round, which is dropped by many bandits and it's pretty cheap. This is the close range round. Slugs increase the effective range of the double barrel but are heavy, not as easily found as buckshot and you actually have to aim precisely with these. Slugs can one hit lightly armored enemies, which is really useful at the start of the game, but for mutants, which is what this is intended for, buckshot is far better. Come on, photo, work, please, please, there you go. <laughs> Next up is the Fort 12 MK2, or 4 12 as some people call it. It's a 1990s handgun based on the real life Ukrainian Fort 12. This handgun is more accurate and has a bigger magazine size than the Makarov, the PMM, holding 12 rounds. After the first quest has been finished, it is available for a low price from the trader and is a straight upgrade from the PMM. It might have lower reliability, but this really shouldn't matter. This gun uses the same ammo as the PMM, the 9x18mm ammunition, meaning it's cheap and easy to find. In the starting area you start in, shown in this picture, pardon for the quality, <laughs> it's, which is called Cordon, there is a bridge held by the military. The leader of this group has an upgraded 415 with three more rounds in the magazine. 
While it's really useful, especially early game, I don't suggest killing this dude unless the player is willing to die over and over and over again. Lots of quick saves required. Well, nearing the end of Cordon, you find this gun called the Viper 5 submachine gun, based on the German H&K MP5. It's found in the early game. It's not bad against lightly armored enemies and mutants, but it is... Okay, I guess it's a better alternative to the pistols if that's all the player has. However, any sort of armor quickly leads to the Viper 5 being outclassed, and it should be swapped out for something else at that point. While its condition rapidly depletes, leading to jamming, this gun will be thrown away by the time that happens. The 9x19 ammo is pretty common and cheap, however. All in all, use this early game, leave it a bit later. Now here's a more useful weapon. It's the AKM 74-2U. Jesus, that's a mouthful. Based on the AKS 74U, another Russian rifle. Since the theme here, this gun is a submachine gun in size and weight, but uses an assault rifle round, 5.45 times 39 millimeter. This is the earliest assault rifle the player can get, and is recommended to keep till a full-sized AR is found. It has low accuracy and damage compared to the other assault rifles, but in the early game, this is still far superior to the pistols in the Viper 5. It's got good armor penetration and recoil. This gun should be used at medium range and will make quick work of any lightly to medium armored enemies encountered at the start of the game. Ammo is scarce, especially in cordon and expensive compared to pistol rounds, but it really can't be beat early game in terms of sheer power. Use this one, this will be a workhorse for a while. Next up is a 9x19 handgun, the Walker P9M, based on the German Walter P99. This pistol is pretty common, many factions carry this as their backup pistol. While it's got low damage, it makes an ideal sidearm due to its low weight, reliability and a good magazine size of 16, along with decent accuracy. As a sidearm, this is a better choice than the macro, for sure, and it is ideal to use when your primary weapon's ammo should be conserved. Say, your primary weapon is the AK. It'll be quite a while till an upgrade is found. This upgrade comes in the form of the AKM-74-2, based on the AKS-74, made used by Russia. This is almost a direct upgrade to the previous SMG, the AKM-74 to you. It's got much better accuracy, still pretty low for an assault rifle, mind you. And, it, and it's got a bit better damage. The only downside of it comes in weight, but at this point in the game, it's not a concern unless holding. I, I know I'm pretty guilty of that one. Once the player starts finding this weapon, the ammo will be much more common, and thus it can be used effectively for quite some time. Later on in the story, in a secret stash underground, I'm not going to get into details because it's got spoilers, even though the story doesn't really matter in this game. There is a better variant of this weapon, which can be found with higher durability, and fires faster, and has less recoil. I know this because this this fast shooting version of the AK, and that's what it's called in game, is really easy to find if you just follow the story. Like its real life counterpart, this gun's really reliable. Next up is the Chaser 13. It's the second and arguably the most useful shotgun. This is a huge improvement over the double barrel, and six, six rounds compared to the two of the double barrel. The same positives and downsides apply as the double barrel, just keep that in mind. Uses the same ammo and everything. This gun will be outclassed later by much more versatile rifles, but when the player finds it, it does its job, which is hunting mutants, extremely well. Then there's the Core 919, based on the iconic American Colt M1911. Its real-life properties are carried over the, into the game somewhat, since it has quite a bit more damage and armor penetration than the other pistols found before it. This is due to its ammunition, the 45 ACP round, well, 0.45 ACP if you want to get technical. It is harder to find than the 9x18 and 9mm rounds used in other pistols. This, this pistol holds only 7 rounds, thus it is vital to use these few shots properly. It's also pretty heavy and might not be a good choice for some players due to this if the AK has enough rounds. It's really up to personal preference. The damage? Is it worth the trade-off? For the magazine size? Okay, what's next is the AC96-2, also called the o Obokan, there you go. <laughs> Base of the AN-94 used by Russian forces in the late 1990s. Its goal was to replace the AK-74 and barely does so in the game. Like, not really. This is due to it having just a little bit more accuracy than the AKM-742, the full-sized AK. However, the reason I don't suggest this weapon simply is simply because the fast-shooting AKM is this, the one I talked about. It's better in terms of recoil and fire rate. This rifle is also less reliable than the AKM and has a bit longer reload time, although the reload time really doesn't matter. Don't put yourself into a situation where the reload time matters. All in all, unless the fast-shooting AKM is found, Pick this one up for a slight upgrade. 
Okay, before this, let me just talk about 5.56 times 4 5 millimeter ammo. This ammo is better than 5.45 times 3.9 used by the AKM and the Obokan, having more range and better armor penetration. Just don't use this against mutants because it's a waste. Okay, so what's next is the L8, sorry, the TRS-301. It's pretty accurate, it has low weight, and since it uses 5.56, good damage and armor penetration. This leads to it being far more effective against enemies than other guns previously found. This gun does take a different scope than the 5.45 guns, so it uses a SUSAT scope, which the player probably doesn't have at this point. It's going to have to be found to make a somewhat effective long-range gun. The ammo is also pretty hard to find when the gun is first obtained. However, later on, this gun and its ammo become extremely common. If this gun is favored, I suggest to carry two of them, however stupid that sounds. This gun in full auto, choose through durability. So if the player doesn't want to carry two guns, use bird fire or single fire. Also, another thing I want to get into is the L85A2, based on the Lee Enfield gun. I might be getting the name wrong here, and I'm sorry, I don't have a picture of that, but I don't really care about this gun. Let me explain why. The gun does come built in with a 4x scope. It's pretty accurate if tap firing, but burst fire and automatic fire removes all reason to use this gun since it loses accuracy extremely quickly. There's no point. After 70% durability, this thing also keeps jamming. There's also another downside, which is the weight at five kilograms. The last downside is also the ammo, just like the TRS. It's rare. It, it uses 5.56. Don't take this thing unless it's really necessary. There's a better 5.45 I've already covered, the TRS-301. What's next is the third and last shotgun, the SPSA-14, based on the SPAS-12, an Italian shotgun. The gun is slightly more recoil and less damage than the Chaser-13, but its special ability to say is its reliability and while in game it might seem semi-auto it fires at the speed of a pump don't be mistaken it's also the it's also the player's choice to use this the rifle or the lighter chaser with two less rounds if i'm being honest in my perspective i don't see the point of the shotgun another pistol found wait that's that's the sgi 5k my bad it's uses 5.56 and it's based on the SWIG, Swiss, <laughs> it, SIG, SG550. Damage remains the same as the TRS-301, which is what I'm going to compare this to. The accuracy is about the same, it, for example, it's really good and is much more durable than the TRS. The recoil also, at least from my personal experience, is lower. The downsides of this weapon are the around 4 kilogram weight and the inability to mount a scope. It's fine, just squint your eyes joking please don't do that okay so next up is the what do you call it the, yeah the Sipper T M200 it shoots 45 ACP just like the Cora 919 fun for a handgun it's pretty great it has good accuracy damage and an okay magazine holding seven rounds to add to this is the UDP compact I don't have a picture of these because these two guns are basically the same other than one more round in the mag of the UDP but the UDP also jams more frequently. It's, it really doesn't matter. It's up to the player's personal preference as to what gun they like. Maybe the player can even ditch a handgun at this point considering the TRS and all the other 5.56 rifles exist. Okay, next up is the big boy, the Thunder S14. It's based on the Russian OTS-14 Groza. This gun's got extremely good armor penetration since it uses the somewhat rare at this point, 9x39 ammo. It gets a bit common later. It's highly accurate, especially at close range. It also comes with an integrated grenade launcher, handy for the big mutants. However, there are quite some downsides. The small 20 round mag, frequent jamming, and as I said, heavy and rare ammo. The ammo, however, is much more common in game, which alleviates one of the problems with this gun and the next one. I say the next one because this is the VSS Ventoris. It also uses 9x39 ammo. In game, it's known as the Ventar BC. This round, when used while sniping, does have a pretty big bullet drop, so it's important to keep that in mind. I say while sniping since this gun also makes a for formidable close-range weapon and a somewhat different alternative to the Thunder S14. However, in that use case scenario, the built-in 4x scope, which mind you is better than the 2x of the ARs, will not help. But the extremely accurate- oh for fuck's sake, Luke. Luke, no! Okay, <laughs> sorry. But the extremely accurate hipfire will. 
It also needs frequent reloading with the 10 round mag. A modified version does exist called the SA Avalanche, which is built for close range. Here's the thing, the SA Avalanche has no integrated scope and an extended 20 round mag, so it's really up to the player as to what gun they want to use. Okay, next up is the GP37, based on the Heckler & Koch, or Agent K, German G36. It uses the extremely common, at least at this point in the game, 5.56 round, so ammo shouldn't be a problem. It's all around great in terms of damage, accuracy, and recoil, but the trait of the gun is its reliability in fully automatic fire. The reliability rapidly decreases in full auto. It's actually the worst reliability in the game, making it wildly inaccurate, but jamming shouldn't be a problem till much later. It also can't mount a grenade launcher or a suppressor. Overall, it's probably the most versatile gun in the game and should be picked up ASAP. There's one last rifle, the FT200M. It's based on the Belgian FN F2000. This gun comes with both an integrated scope and a grenade launcher. Compared to the GP37, it has slightly less accuracy and a bit more damage. It uses 5.56, same as all the other rifles, which is so common at this point you can practically throw it away. I think you actually have to at this point since it gets really heavy. The downside is the gun's weight at around 4.5 kilos, but in the end it's really the player's choice as to what in-game rifle they prefer, whether on stats or looks, this or the GP37. And finally, there are two more traditional cybers, the SVU MK2 and the SVD M2, based off the Russian SVU and SVD respectively. Both have the highest accuracy possible, which is amazing, and their damage is extremely high. Compared to each other though, the SVU has a bit less damage, accuracy, and range, but it also has less recoil and a much higher RPM. Multiple targets, somewhat close range if you will. The SVD has all the others, higher damage, and will easily kill highly armored enemies containing the second highest damage in the game. The highest damage gun? It's a secret left till the end of the game. Well, that's it. This is the SVD, mind you. Okay, I'm done. Before I stop recording, thanks to the Stalker Wiki for most of the info, which I somewhat had to streamline, and some of the picture. Hope everyone finds this useful, and thanks for watching.